Our today's keynote speaker, Professor N. Ramesh Babu, is the professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering at IIT Madras. He is going to give the talk on smart manufacturing. Now, without any further delay, I would like to invite our session chair, Professor U.S. Dixit, to chair the today's session with a brief biography of our keynote speaker and effectively take us through the proceedings. Please give a warm round of applause for our session chair. So, Professor N. Ramesh Babu uh, is nowadays professor and uh, holding many positions. Uh, he was a coordinator of Ameda Seed Federal Research Center and uh, also secretary of a Mars Manufacturing Technology Development Center. He has uh, supervised many PhD students. Uh, still, there are some students are continuing. And uh, he has about 38 years of teaching experience and 2 years of industrial experience. Uh, he has published several papers, okay, that means they may be more than 200 uh, in various journals, conferences, and he put it there, book chapters. And uh, uh, then he has conducted, executed many projects, okay, work for all Sapu Beach. He has set up uh, many facilities in the IIT Madras. Uh, so about I then I do already know that he got lifetime achievement award also in this IMDDR. Okay. And uh, he has also organized similar conferences. Uh, but main thing is that what I will survive from my side apart from the biodata that information is in the net also uh, that he takes keen interest in applying any academic knowledge to industry. I think that is his obsession. When I, I noted that wherever, wherever he goes, he just gets attracted to talk to that industry person, contact him, say that thing. So that is the, his main strength. And I think that his talk will be very motivating. And in this talk, he will also tell and he, that what is the importance of you know, that uh, reaching to industries and uh, making the research available for the general public. Okay, so that's what. Okay, so with this, I invite him. Yes, thank you very much, Professor. Thank you. Yes, so, do I need to stand here? Or? So, first of all, let me thank Professor Dekit, who is a good friend of mine, and uh, you know, being in this. Uh, uh, community of manufacturing, we call it a, it's a community because we keep meeting uh, almost every now and then, every three months or six months or nine months. Many meetings, whether for the Nato Jamaki activities, uh, PhD Vaivas. Uh, I know that he is also one of the busiest persons in the country, helping many of them. So I appreciate his keenness uh, to help many, many universities and ideas. I think I am really privileged to have him as the session chair to introduce me. So thank you, Professor Dixit. I think it's it. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. So I think without that also we can easily reach anyone because I am a teacher. So, so first and foremost thing is uh, I would like to express my sincere th thanks to the organizing uh, committee uh, to invite me for this keynote talk. It was uh, uh, decided that you know, at some time that they wanted to have me as a keynote speaker in view of uh, somebody else who has come. If you were supposed to get one at the CRAM from the uh, US, again, he's the alumnus of IIT Madras. So then, I thought that he would come on the circular economy because he has been working on the nanotechnology and circular economy and other things. And then I decided to cover a few aspects. One is how the smart manufacturing is being viewed by everyone. Uh, everyone in the right from the academia to the industry, policy makers and the government. See, they, if you look at the government, they want to compete with the other nations by being smart. So they say the smart manufacturing, smart cities, smart 
homes and smart transportation, everywhere is smart. But then I had the opportunity to interact with the many industries and uh, happened to attract funding from the Ministry of Living Industries, so 20 percent from the industry and 80 percent from the government. And uh, I have always worked on the technology, I never worked on the services. Uh, so that's where I thought that I should enlighten some of the young, you know, assistant professors, associate professors, and professors. With a, a small background about how the world is looking at this smart manufacturing. Okay. Then I am going to what we are doing it, what we should do it, and how we should take this one from academia to the industry. See, we have certain roles to play as an academic uh, uh, member. We also have certain roles to play as a contributor to the industry because we are sending out large number of students from IITs and MITs and universities. Unless they understand what is smart manufacturing, it will not be possible for them to contribute. I think that's why yesterday's lecture was really an icebreaker for all of us to know that what is increasing manufacturing and balance This is where all of you should remember that I am going to stop at the industry 4.0. Then we can go beyond that one by looking at the inclusiveness. Of course, uh, we at AMPDC also working at the inclusive manufacturing by connecting with the rural colleges and looking at the rural manufacturing and training large number of students in type 2, type 3 colleges. In this sense, unless you bring everyone up, it is not possible for us to contribute to the, to the GDP and also national economy. Though we have been talking, 40% was there long back, centuries ago. But today we are only 16 to 17% or 17 to 18%. I think over the last 7 to 8 years we have been driving manufacturing with several slogans like Made in India, Atma Nebhar Bharat, Made in India, everything, PLI schemes, etc. But the, one of the major issues and major challenges is all of them have to come together. That is where you know, inclusiveness is important for us to become the lead in the manufacturing. I think we are happy about what we are doing. I am not saying that we should not do it, we should continue to do that. But we should go one step beyond that one in order to bring the others also into us so that the intellectuals, the business you know, people who generate the money for the country and the policy makers who depend on both of us, both the academia as well as the industry. So they can't now make the policy which is not accepted by both in order to collaborate it and then bring some change in the overall system. That's where you know you can find all those logos. I have put everything together. One is the NPDA, it is our major mandate here. And of course, IDPHQ is uh, holding this one. And uh, we have a Ministry of Heavy Industries funding our center and funding many centers, not only in IT Madras. I'm going to touch upon some of them to tell that. There is a lot of effort which is going on to push this idea of uh, Make in India, Atma Gandhar So, IIT Madras has supported me to set up this center as an independent center outside the IIT campus in a separate research park. So, we took this space and we are generating the money as a faculty member. How difficult it is to generate even one rupee. We can only take the funding from the government and use it, but we are generating the revenue to various other activities that we are doing it for the industry. So I think this is where, you know, I just wanted to share this entire thing. So first thing is, the first you know, few slides are going to be on how the smart manufacturing is being viewed by each one of us. So we tend to think that the industry 4.0 is smart manufacturing, IoT is smart manufacturing, data analytics is smart manufacturing. Of course, all of them are part of the smart manufacturing. I think when you look at the whole scenario, the next industry revolution, the manufacturing to be profitable, reliable, competitive, responsive. That's what we say. That means you know, it should be responsive to the needs of the society, to the needs of the individuals as mass customization. And also it should be reliable. Though you produce a component or a product, if it is not reliable, it is not useful. And it should be profitable. Unless you make some profit, you cannot really make your industry into smart. And then it should be competitive. You have to globally be competitive, otherwise somebody will come and throw you off. So this is where, I think, in a nutshell, all those things 
can be covered in terms of some pointers here. By the way, if you look at manufacturing, there are two sides of the pipe. One is the processes, machines, some technologies and other things. But then when you look at the business, it's an organization, it's a factory. So the factory is managed by the big, big you know, people like CEOs, MBAs and others. So on, on one side, you look at it, you know, all these processes, machines, handling systems, etc. So that's why we said, now if you look at all that, physical processes, information process. The information is growing vertically, if you look at an organization. But then within the organization, there are several activities, right, from the designing, manufacturing, assembly, inspection, and then dispatching, marketing, etc. Each one is a, a small activity. So the horizontal integration and vertical integration is what we today talk about the smart manufacturing. I think I just told you about what is meant by horizontal. When we talk about the FMS, when we talk about the flexible manufacturing cells, we are connecting them to data networks, connecting them to the information processes. So though these two appear to be very rudimentary, when you look at it from a bird's eye view point of view, but then they are there everywhere. The information is flowing, data is flowing, and the physical processes are happening. So hence it is a, a combination of these two which is making the entire smart manufacturing as a, a feasible and reliable today. Why? We didn't talk 10 years ago, 20 years ago because the technologies were not mature enough. And today we are talking about the 5G and 6G. We are talking about the machine and learning, data analytics, artificial intelligence, virtual reality, etc. So hence, now the maturity of all of them have made us to think of integration of OD plus IT. The operational technologies are nothing but the, the physical processes, information technologies are nothing but the information process. I think that's where you know to begin with. So I think we all know, I think you would have seen in many books and many articles, I just wanted to only bring to the attention of all of you. So this is where we think, I think yesterday also our chief guest was talking about what is industry 4.0 and the terminology is more important for us as an academician. I can't loosely use anything and then confuse my students or PhD scholars or even the fellow industries. So that's where you want to be clear about what is in internet of things. What is cyber physical system? I'm going to throw some light on each of them to give you an insight into each one of them to make you aware that it is a bundling of several things, which is what we call it as a horizontal and vertical integration. Is what I'm going to talk. To. So the information and operation has to be done. The other one is many of them tend to get confused with this term, saying that smart manufacturing is immediately additive manufacturing. And some people will say that I am working on smart manufacturing. What are you doing? And they say Dobo. There's no doubt, if you look at the world scenario of robotics and SaaS, SaaS is nothing but software as a service, is going to be one of the predominant activities which is going on all over the world. I think we have the speakers like Satyendra Gupta and many of them, cyber security, which is Satish Mukhapatnam and then additive, additive manufacturing by Murali Sundaram. So whoever is doing some work on that is related to the components of the smart manufacturing in order to make these processes more <coughs> faster. That's why we talk about additive, less waste and then more you know, reliable. So hence, you know, I'm not getting into each one of them today. I'm only throwing some words and you know, terminology to begin with. Now, I think there is there are two things. One is manufacturing and then factory. The smart manufacturing now today with all these integrations is a flat. Even organizations have become flat. There is no hierarchy. Multi-scale. So Sir Radha Krishna has told the multitasking. Each one of you have to do the multitasking. You need to possess the multiple skills. So it is a flat, data driven, and it should be sustainable in the sense of organization doesn't have people with multiple skills and multiple tasks being handled so that organization will collapse in no time. So hence it is sustainable, agility, people oriented, profitable, innovative and current. So this is not my thing folks has brought it out in 2018 or so. 
saying again that it connects millions of meetings and people. Then confuses us. Don't worry about millions, at least do with, you know, a few. That's what you have to start with. In an academic scenario or industry scenario, if you get confused with all these, you know, then you will not get any clarity. So, this is where we need to think that what is smart factory? Smart factory means we have to bring networks, we have to invest so much money, and we have to bring the software for you know, operations management, and optimization and decision making. Please don't get confused with all that. This is what the big tanks, I tell you, Siemens, Tarkwell, uh, and many of them wanted to give that software. It has been developed over decades. But from CAD CAM, they have moved into the SAP, SAP to ERP, ERP to that because they have spent the to billions of you know, dollars in hiring people and engaging the people to develop it. But the small and medium state industries cannot afford even one of them. So please remember that. I am going to show how many million MSMEs are there in the country and the world who are really starving without funds. The finances and others are at a great you know, risk. So hence, you know, the interconnection of machines, communication mechanisms and computing power, we make, make the system as a cyber critical system. So all the technologies which we are talking today are all advanced technologies, but how well we use those advanced technologies is also one of the challenges. And I have been watching the papers on machine learning, neural networks, artificial intelligence. Do we need to find those words, you know, to get ourselves publicized and, like, you know, become prominent, no? So, this is where the data is the one which is the most important. Without the current data, without the sufficient data, you cannot really make anything. With 27 points and with 9 points, you are using the machine learning, neural networks, etc. I think, is it safe to call that as an artificial intelligence or a, a neural networks or a machine learning? Is the question that you need to answer yourself. So, I think this is where any automated process, I will show you how much data is required if you want to automate the process. If you want to understand how the process is going on. So, and you need to learn as it goes. It is not a one time activity. Any of you know that how much time it will take for a company to set up this uh, industry 4.0 or the rocket? The new factories are using all these technologies like network, you know, communications and softwares and other things. Anybody guess? But a new company like Apollo Tires, I know, Amara, DK Tires, they all wanted to have uh, customer driven manufacturing, mass customization. Maybe anyone, why guess? No, two years they have to continuously run the factory with varied models. And then, right from the, so, you know, so many things, presses are there, vulcanizers are there, and then so many things you know, are going on in making a type, a two wheelers, three wheelers, four wheelers, so many things. So I have known some of them in Apollo Tires and MRF and JK Tires. They say that they use the Rockwell. Well, I was also participating as the panelist in some of the Rockwell roadshows. Guys wanted to sell their software. This may cost about two crores to begin with, and then maintenance will take again 25 lakhs in 50 lakhs. Can you afford that? We all know about the CAD CAM software. And the educational licenses, they give it free because you are the ones who are going into the industry. You can say that I have used this abacus, I have used this one, so please use this one. So I think they are using us as the scapegoats for them to make their business. Yeah, but now we need to do everything in India if you wanted to really become one of the superpowers. That's why you know, make in India, ask money for power and all these things are happening. I think with this, you know, I wanted to tell you what makes a smart factory. It's not only connecting the machine. The people have been smart, as I told you, multi-skilling, multitasking. Then processes have to be made into very fast, reliable, responsive. Then technologies have to be brought in. They have to be introduced in a slow pace. Because no factory can be warmed up and set up with a new machine. Legacy machines have to be translated into smart. And you need to 
interconnect them with the local networks and Wi-Fi etc. So you imagine that this matter factory requires integration of all these things. I think I don't want to get into this one. But I think today's world is everywhere, every factory, wherever you go and visit that one, they have dashboards. These dash, dashboards only for the operations management. They wanted to know how many hours a worker is working, how much time is idling in a shift, how many hours the machine is running, what is the energy is being consumed. So they are using all these sensors, actuators, cameras and all of them, collecting the data and presenting the data on the dashboard using some softwares. I think I'll show you a couple of examples on that also. So hence, you know, what we are trying to do it, as I said, four words I said, it should be faster, it should be responsive, should be reliable, should be profitable, should be competitive. So unless you have these things in a factory, then no factory can become sustainable. So I think there are some learnings from many companies uh, which I have shown you here, I don't want to read out all of them, so you can tell them. Now if you see, what is the scenario, I am not talking about India, please remember that. See when you look around and then see, there are several reports which are brought out by many many uh, agencies, associations like NASA International, that we are attacked in uh, Asia Pacific region. So all of them have brought out the reports and academicians in different universities working on smart manufacturing also. They clearly say that these percentages clearly disclose how well this uh, smart manufacturing uh, has been percolated into various areas. I think to give you one hour, do not currently use smart manufacturing and does not plan to. Some companies don't worry about it. They already uses a fully integrated smart manufacturing solution because it's a new factory. And then 39 percent already use some components of smart manufacturing. Maybe robots they use it, sensors they use it. And then 35 percent actively evaluating the smart solutions with the intention to invest. So please, the scenario, and uh, if you look at the world, these are the countries which are actually moving into the smart manufacturing at an accelerated you know, pace. One is China and uh, India also over the last few years, we have been putting a lot of effort and many companies are coming to India because the infrastructure, supply chain and all of them are available to This is not my version, you can just look at this particular report no, on the smart manufacturing. Now, if you see the SWOT analysis if you do, strength, weaknesses, opportunities and threats, there are so many things which are there, I am not getting into each one of them, in terms of the technology. In terms of the management, in terms of the finances, I think I will summarize it in the next slide. So, though we talk about so many systems, like right from the planning to the execution to the operations to the final systems, all of them have not become easily available to many industries. You look at the pharmaceutical industry to the space industry. So, healthcare industry to the okay, nuclear submarines, etc. So many technologies are required which will be adaptable or it should be suitable for those things. So imagine the scope of smart manufacturing which is going to be phenomenally high but still we are not able to compete with those multinationals like Rockwell, Siemens, Snyder, etc. because we don't think in a very, in a very, you know, straight way. And we pick up something and we want to do something which is not the way that we should do. Now let me see, this is where uh, the IMA it's a management association, All India Management Association has brought out in 2021. In these strengths are, in this smart manufacturing will reduce the cost, and efficiency will be improved highly, and uh, smarter factories, safer factories, no loss of no accidents, nothing will happen, and faster to market because you are producing them as per the customer needs. What is the weakness? Most of the small, medium enterprises are not IT ready. They don't have the you know, infrastructure in order to connect their machines and uh, office automation, lands, etc. And uh, advanced manufacturing technologies are not available. They don't even have a robot. So can you imagine that if the company has to become a smart, how much time they have to invest? Lack of innovative culture. You don't find innovative culture in most of the MSMEs. I think a person with a diploma will join and then operate the machines and manage them. 
the lack of strategies to succeed. At the management level, only one person is heading, he is the CEO of the company. So I think these are all the weaknesses. What are the opportunities? Stay relevant to the market needs. I help India to stay competitive in the global market. I think this is all known. So what is the threat? Technology paralysis. The obsolescence of technology is happening every four years, every five years. So you can imagine that you now the chips and devices. So the technology paralysis and poor maturity index. Most of the companies for the smart manufacturing, if you take it as a one, they are below one, they are at zero. I am not talking it is industry 1.0 or 2.0, but in 3.0 also they are far below one CNC machine will be there, all other operators and others are using it. So the risk during adoption, they are not able to really put them together. They have everything, but they don't use them. They have a CAD software, CAM software, but they don't know how to put them together. I think this is where most of the MSMEs, which contribute to about 5% of the total manufacturing output, about 40% of it is uh, export quality is suffering. Just imagine how, what is the opportunity and how we can do it. Now, I am just coming back to India. What we are doing it over the last 10 years, from 2014 to 2023. See, the summer to give Bharat is again a movement by the Ministry of Indian Industry and many of them, Niti Aayog and others. So they wanted to really bring industries and academia come closer. They have also promoted the advanced manufacturing technologies like robotics, making the precision machines, efficient machines. All these things require, you know, IoT and sensors, actuators and others. And uh, the experiential and demonstration centers to create an awareness, I think, in IoT, VHU also, we are creating the centers of excellence of machine tool design and many other things through various you know, methods. And uh, common platforms, they have also created how all of them can be brought into common platform. One of them is the technology innovation platforms. They will be funded. IIT Madras and CMTI, uh, RI, ICAT to bring the automotive and machine tools together. We have a platform called Type, and I, I will share it with all of them. So, as you see, that you now the Center for Industry 4.0, the IIT Delhi has this, you know, uh, the Automotive Association, and then uh, ESC has got something, IIT Karanpur has got the Advanced Manufacturing Technology, and the CMTI. And of course, I will talk about more. So, we at the IIT Madras, we were good at you know, technology wise, right from the beginning. And I have contacted many industries with whom I have a very good you know, synergy and very good you know, interaction over the last 20 30 years. And they have supported me in developing some advanced machines before we started this one. And we started this in 2016 as a separate entity. In IITM research part, and the contributions come from industry, 20 percent, then only the government. So this is where you can see several industries, as I have shown you in this slide. These are all gains in the machine industry. Like Case Micromatic is one of them. Jyoti, CNC, and now Automation Limited is another one. One switch Werner, M2 Next. They are all our location machines. They are all our partners now in the Advanced Manufacturing Technology Center. To develop specific technologies, which will make these machines into advanced machines, which we call the EMPs. Unless you have the advanced manufacturing technology, you can't even think of a smart manufacturing. So I think this is where our center mandate is not to look at lower two. Basic research, we can keep doing it. I'm not saying that we don't do. But we sitting at the center are working only on the TRL 7 to 9, where how do we translate them into commercially viable technologies in partnership mode. Not, so I don't want to do it independently. We have a set of engineers around from IITs and other you know, institutions. We are training them to become the leaders of the research and development centers. So, it's basically several uh, benefits and, and missions, you know, roles are there. We are training them first. To make them as a high quality human resources. And many of them become entrepreneurs with startups by incubating some ideas. So you can see some of them in the uh, website and also in our IIT research. 
So now if we just look at some of those technologies, I'm going to get into the technology and also talk about only smart manufacturing. To give you an idea about what all we do at AMTDC is not one single area. When we are talking about the smart manufacturing, as I told you, we need the technologies. So hence we talk about hydrostatic bearing systems, slides and spindles, which are required for the high precision engines and the highly reliable engines. Otherwise, wear and tear will make the slides you know, to have a lesser value. So other technologies, which we call them as a mother technologies, are the mother machine tools which are used everywhere, right? From the tire industry to the pharmaceutical industry, everywhere you require those machines for something else. The other one is robotics and automation, which is you know essential for making this uh, smart manufacturing as a you know, reality. Then we also look at the digital and smart manufacturing, wherein uh, how the data can be taken from the controller and how do we display the data in the form of a dashboard, etc. is the one. So you can see that you now the manufacturing encompasses all of them. We are doing the projects related to that. I am not doing only one and say that I don't do it. But depending on the opportunity, we have built the advanced additive manufacturing machines. The processes are developed by the professors from uh, IIT, either in the metallurgy or civil engineering, or engineering design, etc. So what happens is this will be like in between the industry and academia, wherein you take these ideas, put them together and make these machines with the handling systems and other things. So, I think this has made us to collaborate further with many multinationals. When they come to us, many of them say that hey, this is the best place where we can invest our money and create some interest among the youth. See, everyone is interested in uh, engaging the youngsters. Why? Because they need people. See, everywhere you know we need the talented people, either in the academics or in the industry, etc. So they give some projects and the ideas which are generated will be turned out into some you know, piece of output which they will take it and plug it in and use it. That's how you know, we are actually working with each of these industries. I think the MESA is in America and uh, Pandia is uh, in Philippines and uh, Singapore. They are also working with Taiwan and uh, Asia Pacific and AMTDC we partnered and uh, this smart manufacturing and digital transformation was set up. As a virtual center. We are not taking any money. Like as I told you, that's my summer to give, we didn't want to get in just like that because we can't you know, manage all those problems. So I think the mandate of this particular, we all sat together and said that it will operate as a virtual center and uh, it is basically uh, set up in order to make this special interest group. Whoever is interested can become a member of this group and we share and exchange some ideas. And once they say that this is the problem and uh, I have already done this one, so I wanted to use your tools. So that this special interest group is like, like a club where each one can bring their ideas, each one can benefit from the others and uh, you can have an MOU and understandings and etc. We are going through this entire process as well the manufacturing execution system, MES you call it. And that's being built with many of them. So I think there are five objectives in setting up this smart manufacturing and digital transformation one is first assess the maturity level of industry. I told you maturity one is the smart manufacturing. Below one. I think these are all questionnaires which are prepared by many governments including Tamil Nadu State and Karnataka and UP maybe all of them to assess the industries and their calculations in terms of the maturity for smart manufacturing. So that is the first one and then how do we make them closer to the smart manufacturing is to provide the solutions. It may be through R&D, it may be through an app or through some software development, etc. And also educate them. What is meant by automation? See, most of them are not fully aware. Their managers, if one person knows, it doesn't really help the industry. So, and then experience center, we have the facilities and we have done these projects and we are using this one as an experience center to give them what is smart manufacturing. Then any problem is there, we will solve it, they will collaborate with more and enter an innovation so they can also benefit. And we'll through this one we are trying to build a supply chain. So I think let me just play this one. Maybe you can speak on to it. 
So this was inaugurated by the Tata Sons. transformation in India by the deployment of appropriate technologies. AMTDC, a center of excellence supported by IIT members, Ministry of Heavy Industries, Government of India and Indian Industries, is a synergistic institution for transformational research. NASA International is a global non-profit association providing education, networking and best practice sharing around smart manufacturing, and Industry 4.0 and serving industry since 1992. NASA's community includes manufacturers, producers, industry leaders and solution providers who are focused on driving business results for manufacturing technology. Cantier is a leading provider of next-generation manufacturing execution system for Industry 4.0 as a unified solution with seamless integration to IIoT data foundation and manufacturing intelligence platforms in business operations. SMDTC will catalyze the creation and use of homegrown, cost-effective and self-reliant solutions, contextualized by collaborative research and end-to-end innovation, with the process of simplify, synchronize, synergize, scale, and sustain. The five pillars of SMTDC operation are 1. Smart Manufacturing, Maturity Assessment 2. Smart Manufacturing, Education Program 3. Smart Manufacturing, Experience Center. 4. Smart Manufacturing, Collaborative Research and End-to-End Innovation. 5. Smart Manufacturing, Supply Chain Collaboration. SMDTC. Come join us and reimagine the future of digital transformations. Yeah, this is located within the center. Just to see, one is not enough. I'm not going to say that I'm doing great work, but I wanted to tell you all 1.4 billion. 20, 30 people, you can do very small. It's a task I told you the other day. You can't make this country a great you know, country as an economically developed. So we know what problems we are facing every day. It's not that a few individuals have to bring the culture of you know, smartness in every activity. That's why Modi said smart doesn't mean that you know, unless you are smart in each and every activity. I thought today was an election was saying we need to have the culture of innovation. Today you do, but don't do tomorrow the same thing. That's where you know you have to constantly think of change. So this you know only one small part of it which we wanted to do it without taking the money from others. We will bring the people, ask them to provide their solutions, we will put some students, we will help them, and they will also get good you know, opportunities in the industries. The culture will be developed in course of time. It again depends on how many people will get involved. So as you see that now, I am just going to spend some time, like 15 minutes on that. What are those case studies that we have attempted over the last you know, seven, eight years? One is, we took the CNC cutting machine, which is produced by the Yes group. I think Yes also has a staff here. They have been selling these machines over the last two decades. But the precision of uh, the machine is about 40 to 50 microns. And when the same machine is used from morning to evening to produce the same component, it gives an error of 40 to 50 microns to be the thermal, thermal drift, thermal no deformations, and thermal heating, etc. etc. So we have addressed this one through a compensation strategy which falls into the IoT, Internet of Things. The second one is a micromatic grinding technologies, which is a grinding machine to manufacturers is located in Ajabad. They also have a plant in the hospital. And uh, the chairman was very close to me because we have all of the next generation position machines and others. And he's and also we have a collaborator from USA, from Saint Domain. We also said that in processes, today Professor Alakish also was very process intelligence, process modeling and simulation. Digital things and the way it. So, if you want to really build, how do you do that? So, I think we built it. It's a framework for the automation of grinding process intelligence. I think this color is not proper automation of a grinding process intelligence. Why grinding? So, all of you know that grinding is the last operation. And if you fail,
they mean that the component now becomes back, you have to throw that. So that's why we have chosen that and that too with the industry. So here we have developed this smart grinding process so that any decision which is taken by the operators, if it is uh, far below the optimum, far below the okay, process expectations, then this system cannot work. Why I am saying this one is the operators keep changing from shift to shift. And uh, the experienced operators will go to some other industries where they get more pay. So I think these problems we wanted to address it through the smart you know, system. And that again uses you know, big data and uh, process based models, the grinding process. So that's why we are doing it. The third one is we have made this smart manufacturing and digital transformation center to read the data from the controllers and display them on the dashboard and how this data can be assimilated, analyzed, segregated and arranged. I think I am going to spend some time on how this three. Uh, and like this you can think of many, many, many depending on the scenario that you have in your okay, industry or in your academic institutions to carry out these works. I think this will throw some light. So when we talk about this smart manufacturing in a new way, and there are many descriptions. And they say the large collection of data and uh, manipulation. And if you visualize the physical processes like grinding, turning, drilling, any process like a human being, I think we came up with a, a broad you know, model. So we thought that see, if we can visualize the physical processes in the manufacturing flow as real human beings, then much of the practices in healthcare management can be seen applicable in the manufacturing sector. So, so human beings, I will tell you in the next slide, what we do, right from our birth to death. Either you do it or your parents will do it or somebody will do it. So this humane treatment of the manufacturing processes will be the next phase of smart manufacturing as well as the process intelligence is concerned. So now we, we start together, I think Satish also was uh, participating in our discussion and the Subhu from USA and we all just felt that on healthcare management we have the records of the patient right from the birth. So that is what we call in the system document. When the machine is built, log in the capabilities of the machine, log in the machine cutting tools that you are using it, grinding wheel, and log in the work pieces which are being you know, machine, ground and cycle design. All of them we need to log in right from the inception of the machine which is commissioned in the factory. I think we have come a long way because of the five to six years of our work. And this is being given to every customer who is buying the machines from the automatic grinding technologies. So what happens is that culture will be developed. So that now if the same type of component is that has to be ground after three months or four months, because you know the CNC is not meant for the mass production, only for the batch production. So the data can be retrieved automatically and the data can be stored in the cloud with so many customers using the different models of the same grind machine or a different machine, etc. I think that is where we call it the system argument. I think we have got 120 parameters to be done in. If you wanted to record the machine tool and its operation and the product quality, etc., including the parameters like definition, etc. So, the second one is the data from routine checkups. You go to the doctor, when you are in boy, then you go to the vaccination and others. So, when you come to the middle age, you go and check up your blood pressure and then you get, when you become old, you go through several tests, etc. So the same thing has to be done like through preventive maintenance or breakdown maintenance. So maintain the process history, the quality control data, production data. Then vital signs, in process signaling. You put in some necessary sensors, don't you know, load it with too many sensors because it will pass a lot and the pass of the machine will go off. So identify the critical regions where you are to monitor the machine. Then advanced diagnostics, if you want diagnostic emission or you know, maybe something else, you, know, you can interpret at the advanced level. So then the treatment is nothing but the rules. You can formulate it with large amount of data. Then medical report, like it will give you health check <coughs> report of the machine every day, every week to the management or the supervisors or CEOs. Advanced treatment, then maybe you have to replace the bearing, you have to replace the password, etc. You can do it. 
and then data and healthcare management issues. So if you do that across the plants, across the units, you can put them on the dashboard and then say this is what is happening. So I think this is where we have done with one machine, a grinding machine. We started in 2011 12. We have two sensors one is the power sensor, all effect sensor, and the other one is LVDT. And now we are using the scale of the CNC machine itself and collecting the data and processing the data. And while processing the data, we are using the physics based models in order to understand how the signal is varying if the process is going well or and that means when the wheel becomes blind, when the wheel gets loaded, the signal will be different. So, signal processing, analysis, filtering, and all of them are part of this and data analysis. And then relating it to the threshold power, specific energy, material remote, all of them will come from the physics space, as you can see here. And this will help us to enhance the grinding process performance from time to time. Cycle design can be done. If any operator is not replacing it, he is using only 50% of the power and then setting the roughing and finishing, it automatically gives a warning saying that, or else it, it will be logged in and they can monitor it. <coughs> I think this is applicable to every process, irrespective of the welding, which are critical processes, polishing processes, maybe only farming processes. All of them have to be very reliable. And robust. So hence, you know, this is just only a part process which you can use it. And as you can see that the many case studies you know we have, I think if you look at the spike in power can be detected and we can say the, there is a grinding burn. The wheel is completely worn out, that's why the signal is very and auditing of the grinding systems. And we also studied the peak power after dressing. Then we have looked at the reduction, comparison of the cycle, reduction of cycle. <coughs> I'm just giving you a few examples because if I simply talk something in A, you may think that okay, you are talking like a teacher, and not like a real you know, translation of research. So that's why it's like there's so many things which we have done it, I'm just going, showing you only one one slide for each of those case studies. And so what really happens is if you look at this slide, there are two orange and the blue. If the operator is choosing the grinding cycle, very poorly. You are not utilizing it, you are not getting the productivity. It takes longer time. And that will automatically tell you. And there are machines like hydraulics machines are there, CNC machines are there. In the same factory, if you have two different machines, the operators operating both these machines will say same parameters they choose, which is absurd. For CNC, the response times, the time constant, and all those things are different from a hydraulic system. So, we have done extensive and what you see here at the bottom is you can use these signals and specific energy, grinding can be found out and various you know, other parameters such as threshold etc. So by doing post dressing, fine dressing. So just imagine a process intelligence has to be captured. You need the data, you need the models, you need to connect them. So hence it is not only physics based models, you may require data driven models. So I think this is where we have built this one, as I said, the system document with 120 parameters and uh, we show them on the dashboard, the customer slowly and we have interacted with the carbon universal who is supplying the grinding wheels and uh, Delphi TBS is using the machines and automatically the machine tool developers, products may go into the market as the automotive industry. So I think this is where you can see, the, this is another project which is basically a thermal compensation strategy. And if you look at any machine, thermal characteristics will be completely different. You can never design a machine without producing the errors. And most of the errors, about 70 to 75 percent errors, are due to the thermal. And other mechanical, static, and dynamic is only 20 to 30 percent. So, this is where we have taken up, and as you can see, that we have characterized the machine tool through various you know, thermal sensors, infrared parameters, infrared imaging systems, etc. Then we also found out the thermal gradients and identified the hot spots. And we have started with 16 sensors and reduced to 5 sensors and today we are using only one sensor plus the ambient temperature. And uh, the axis growth is one thing and spindle growth is another one. Actually it will grow, radially it will grow and the axis also will deform. And these are the main things in a CNC lathe, only with two axis and one spindle. So we did all of them, we developed the error prediction model and use them for compensating the tool contact point 
and in experimental trials are related we have transferred this one and it it's not simply putting the sensor and collecting the data we have to develop the entire control algorithm embedded controller so that it can interact with the cnc controller like a thermal controller etc i think this we are doing it on some other meeting building meetings and here you know uh, having meetings etc because this knowledge won't be able to give to any institute and institutes also don't do it for the reason that there is no industry you can take your knowledge so i think this is where we are doing a game for this and the translational research is done now if you look at it these are all the various schools and we have been equipped with all of them and we also bring a lot of students from various institutions i think one gentleman from dipit came and is here we ask the youngsters to come i don't want only iitians or nitians even bhq you want to send some students please send them i'll be happy to train them proper into please send them but they need to work on such problems and experience themselves so that they get them to and they want to go to industries like bajaj mahindra mahindra tata etc etc so we use this similar analyzer to study that as you see that this is the entire hardware also of course we have the capabilities in india electronics mechatronics all of them can be developed here and finally we have seen during the lunch breaks what can happen and how the machine behaving before the conversation and after the conversation you can see the error is only 9.9 earlier it was about 50 micras so this is where you know we need to it just a hard work it took 3 years first to remember that i am not done it overnight it's not in one project with nine points it took 3 years for us to come to this level then this is the third one as a dashboard when we set up this center in chennai what are the projects we can give to the experts first thing is cnc controller there is a data which is stored somewhere we require some protocols which we don't know there are so many parameters which are stored which parameter belongs to what so this is where we started with you know uh, this project in order to get the Uh, efficiency enhancement we have time inventory reduction and then improved product tracking etc and all these dashboards are being prepared by so we divide them into four one is the machines we network second one is uh, you need to have uh, some protocols which can extract this information and then put them on the cloud or in the local edge computing or a cloud computing and then present it on the dashboards for the visualization of the overall efficiency of the machine or server. I think what we did was we have started with the signals from various processes. It can be a turning process, milling process, grinding process. Then we built. We have already built this sort of a signal processing algorithm. We just apply them and then said that this is the training set of data sets. We need the templates. And uh, machine process classification, part classification, system output in terms of energy consumption, productivity, what is the utilization of the machine, downtime, etc., etc. So all the equipment affected. So please remember, it is not great, but you need to start somewhere. This is the simplest problem we thought we should take it up at the SMDC. Other projects are taken up at the APDC, which took almost three years, etc. This was done by a student who got a job in the first three weeks. Got more than twenty lakhs. What I am saying is, your manufacturing capabilities will improve on one side, and they go into the manufacturing companies in India, and they are also interested to set up such things. And this is what we have done. It in probably we can just click on to it. Real time data collection from the CNC Tanning Center remotely, and this data has come from America. We have collaborated in Canada with our alumnus. And we have got a company, and he uh, is trying to provide the solutions. But then he is not able to go into the process because we have the knowledge and they have the other kind of equipment. So this data comes from a Anup CNC controller. And unless we know the protocol using Focus, and then software is developed, which is basically the signal processing and analysis and template matching and so on, to do provide insights into the performance of the machine to our process. <laughs> So I think what I have covered in the last forty uh, forty five minutes is I think hopefully I have taken only five minutes because we started a bit late. So 
So give you a flavor of how we need to work on smart mantra. I think tomorrow is beyond smart to talk about inclusive, sustainability is one thing, and rural to the urban connectivity, and poor to the rich, and illiterate to literate, disabled to the able. If you want to really connect them, I think somewhere we have to start. And that's where now we need to start working. And this is the center, as I said, it is located away from IIT but connected by French. So we have to take him also. So it just basically to give you a see, unless we all think together, Ramesh Babu is uh, in his I will disappear. But what happened to all of them? I tell constantly to my guys who are sitting there, hey, you are the leaders, I am not the leader. I have, I have read the path. But the path, you know, if somebody blocks it, I think the entire effort will go in vain. And we are all going to be doomed. You know, the country as a whole, we know that China, America, all of them will retreat you if you don't have the capital. So, capabilities are to be enhanced. That's where the government of India is pumping in money. They don't know how to do it. As academicians, we need to put our energies and uh, bring a synergy in order to put you know, the path. I think we have been fairly successful in making the pathway, but I don't say that we are successful in making the education system or academic environment. I think every day we have this steps, at least if we enclose the youngsters, there is some awareness, there is some interest. But that's not enough. We have to start working. So I think these are all few case studies which I thought I will share it. Apart from how this smart manufacturing is viewed all over the world, it's not mine, in the house. Review, I have presented to the EPLU, I have presented to the National Security Advisory Board, but they can only listen. But we are the ones. If these are the conferences and the keynote you know, sessions, it should help you to convince you to work on it. Thank you very much. Once again, I thank Mr. Deepshit and the organizing committee for giving me this opportunity of telling my thoughts. Thank you. Who is leading us to the end? Yes, sir. I need to go to the end. 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 I so many legacy machines are being used by most of the industries. They cannot throw those machines and then bring a new machine. You can start with a thermal compensation standard. And so many machines are a very highly expensive machines like CNC machines and student die making machines, or the EDM. In each of them, you can monitor and say how much energy, what is the energy efficiency, what is the downtime. Simple things. These are all challenges we are addressing. Okay, from legacy to the advanced technologies, we can do many things. Right? These challenges are being faced by the management. I told you that no, they don't have money, they don't have the manpower, they want to come and interact with you know, some university, but the university process will say that this is not my cup of tea. Then where do they go? They go to countries, they will suck. They don't have everything. They drop it. Compromise. I have seen many of the MSMEs saying, okay, I'm okay, sir. If my generation uh, runs this company, I'm okay. Tomorrow, Shishi Sai Raman will be coming. I think she is in the valedictory and saw. I know the story of uh, MTAP. We have done a lot of projects on the robotics and other things, but the next year, they will not willing to take up this. Yeah. Associations like uh, we have Bambatur Association and uh, Indian Material Manufacturers Association, and then CRM, ATMA, we are talking to them also to bring them. But the associations have their agenda different. So please think that it's not only policies, you need to go into the technologies, then only things will change. Like, uh, in, uh, our, uh, no, no, I think, see, uh, like one or two should take the lead. I am not saying that in any system, you know ABC analysis, I don't think that you can change it 
I am also not expecting, you should also not expect. Let's be a small part in the overall system. If, if you can enthuse a few of them, if they can come with you, and you will be believing the deal. And that will become like a... See, it will become, it will take time. That's all I can tell you. See, the industries will come, but then, you know, they are all in a hurry. They want solution for the problem tomorrow. Now you should educate them. Hey guys, you know, look. Don't say that tomorrow I cannot give you. I think you have to show them some benefit in small, small, low handling activities. If you do that, I think you will be able to succeed in it. And every part of that. But we cannot go to all those places. I cannot go to the Punjab, Lukiana. See, plenty of, you know, you go to the Baroda, the you know, Rajkot. No. Many of them are doing it. I am not saying that they are not doing it. Whether they are doing it in a structured way, ad hoc way, scientific way, nobody knows. See, survival of it, because they have to survive, they will import it and then do it. Or else they develop it and then, you know, make it. And then, Keep it as a proprietary to their chest. This is another you know, story of a very small industry. They won't give you anything. So, and then this is where the academic institutions and translation <coughs> centers should come together and work. <coughs> yeah, yeah, I think yes. Sir, I have one question. Yeah. It is a question also. So, my question is that uh, we are doing. So we are doing all these things, mind factory, technology, development, and all that. And we are also developing products. So uh, is it not possible that we should have also a small selling counter? Like uh, we keep on developing and just put it into the selling counter. And the other people get to buy like that. So, most of them should be not there. Because they say, no, no, industry has to take and sell their own. So, I tell you my experience is, I have been interacting with small, medium, and large scale industries. Here I was the consultant with Amada and Jake Jordan and other things. When we interact with the multinationals, their agenda is to take your intellectual capital. They will not even tell you whether it is patentable or not. They will simply target and say that no, my Japanese team has to say whether it is patentable or not. So same government, they will take the idea, grab it and see. So GM, I have done it. So all the companies at the highest level continentals, they will not allow you even to share your thoughts in the form of an IP. Number one. How can you go beyond that? Beyond IP is the commercialization, product, aesthetics, marketing, sales, publicity. I don't think I can do it. I, I don't have the appetite, I don't have the training, and I cannot employ a manager who may think that he will do it, he will not be able to do it because his mindset is completely different. Perhaps I don't believe in that model, end to end in the academic institutions. That's why we put these centers separately and we will. If you know, engineers are talented and uh, we have to manage that one with you know, good uh, capital, resources, human resources and technology resources with faculty. Our model is three-type model, faculty, engineers and students and industry. All of them have to come together. See, if I simply leave it, then industry will give me one crore and they will forget, then you don't do anything. It is a constant, every one and a half months, two months you have to reduce. Every week you ask these guys you know, who are working, they think that I am fertilizing them, but then it is a learning for them. Tomorrow when they want to become entrepreneurial leaders, they learn that. So the other one is with MSMEs and the big level companies, they cheat you. They say that no, they don't tell you about the background IP. If they don't tell background IP, you cannot generate a new IP. So this challenge is everywhere. Even I was talking to the nobody will allow. So the third option is you have to become a startup. Incubate startup, I think we are doing it. And only a few of them are successful out of 100. The percentage is uh, just single digit. So that requires an enormous amount of push, venture companies, etc. Then only you can become a commercial. And that's what we are seeing it as a startups and uh, maybe unicorns. So I think these models have to be worked out with people having the capability. 
And also they should work with a lot of passion. See, if you just work for the money, I think nothing will happen. If the human is not there, it will become like the entire human race will be wiped out by the machines. Please remember that, no? We don't want to have that. That's what he was saying yesterday, no? See, human has to be brought into the center of the industry 5.0. If you don't bring the human being as a creator of a solution, innovator, or decision maker in some way, that's why he said, bring the disabled to be able, poor to be rich, rural to be urban, solve the problems of the society rather than solving the problems of the globe. That's what he was telling, you know, yesterday, sustainability. All these things are nothing but the sustainable living, sustainable environment, sustainable manufacturing, recycling, reusing, circular economy. These are all emerging as the building blocks for the industry 5.0. Naturally, they are emerging so that tomorrow we will see the human being will be there in addressing how a particular material, particular product has to be disbanded and identified the good and bad. Reuse the materials which can be reused, recycle the materials which can be recycled. That's how circular economy will develop. Otherwise, if you keep thinking one component, one thing. I went to a town, a small place in Kerala. That guy is an IIT alumnus, he is about uh, 55 to 60. He thought of rural manufacturing by collecting the e waste. Everything, right from the you know, small. Uh, uh, mouse, to the keyboard, everything. So, identify the good and bad through uh, diploma holders and uh, ITAs. Desolder, check it, develop the devices. So, it is completely rural manufacturing and he uses those components in order to build uh, some tube lights, LED lamps, and you don't require a certification for that because <coughs> rural people don't look for a you know, certified product. They can use that one for maybe one month or two months or three months. So, I think we need to create that sort of a, a model, rural to living. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. This session actually has been brought up by the road, smart manufacturing and also in how this center, a large manufacturing technology development center, and many practical things he discussed and that he has given enough for the heart. And after that, <coughs> you are most welcome. I am an Indian. Okay. <laughs> Bottom line is only that. Yeah. Yeah. Don't think that I am a uh, South or a North or a Professor or a human being. I almost tell you. So I think let us be a other. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for your. Thank you so much sir, for this informative talk. And I would like to thank our session chair sir also. Now it's time to express our gratitude. So we have the shawl and memento for our keynote speaker. So I request our session chair to present the memento to our keynote speaker. Thank you.